the Imperium of Man. Quadrillions of lives, all balancing on a knife edge. But all is not without hope. Stalwart figureheads, glorious heroes, and magnificent leaders work themselves to the bone in order to drive back those who would seek to threaten humanity. They are not without their faults and treacherous secrets, however. Get comfortable and join me as we take a look into a prospering version of humanity with a festering core. If the truth were to be told, in the 41st millennium, mankind is but a shell of its former self. Populations are much larger than they are today, but with number, suffering has increased likewise. Whereas nowadays we know a large majority of what occurs on our planet, the average imperial citizen understands nothing about their position within the universe and the events that take place within it. Be not mistaken, as in truth, this is a blessing. However, for our story, we will begin at the very peak of imperial structure and we will revisit the average life of an imperial citizen later on. Towering over populations of billions, the Imperium of Man is segmented into over 17 distinct groups. At the top of the Imperium's food chain is the Emperor of Mankind, known to many of his serves as a benevolent god. Before their metamorphosis into the throne-fused corpse they are today, they were seen as the peak of human domination, possibly one of the strongest beings in existence. Laden with incomprehensible psychic powers, they would lead their sons and their subsequent chapters of Space Marines into crusades across the galaxy in an almighty effort to claim the entirety of it in the name of humanity. They were successful, to an extent, for a horrible calamity would separate the family of giants and leave the Emperor as a shell, sustaining the psychic pathways and defences of humanity until the day they either finally perish or triumphantly return. In order for the Emperor to maintain the Astronomicon, the interstellar psychic paths that allow the forces of the Imperium to travel through the warp, a hefty price must be paid. 1,000 psychers must be sacrificed each and every day. The Astronomicon is a signal that originates from the Emperor, and so without it, the Imperium would be left stranded and disconnected in space. The psychers are humans with a similar ability to tap into the warp, albeit to a much lesser extent. Their strengths and proficiencies vary wildly, and many are seen as a danger to the Imperium, with or without training. They are constantly at threat of giving in to their insidious strengths, incinerating those around them, or even tearing a void ship in twine. Therefore, those who are selected for this honour are done so due to their prowess and control over their powers, and only after undertaking a sacred ritual which binds their soul to their god leader. The Emperor's life is also paramount to the production of the Astropaths, who are able to psychically transmit messages across the galaxy, another key resource for the Imperium's communication network. For all intents and purposes, the Emperor still serves as the ruler of the Imperium today, but in practice, it appears a rotting corpse has little to say in regard to the ruling of his kingdom. In their place, one of the remaining sons, by the name Robute Gilliman, is the current Lord Commander of the Imperium, an active ruling Imperial Regent. He is the one person that the High Lords of Terror and the Inquisition answer to. Known for his bureaucratic, strategic and level-headed attitude, he is not without his own cavalcade of achievements. It should be noted that he absolutely despised what the Imperium had become during his absence, but has since taken a more composed view, and is aiming to do what he can to keep his subjects alive, and clinging to their terrible lives while they can. As for the Lords of Terror, they form a sort of council. Before Gilliman's return and the subsequent purge of the bureaucracy, they made all of the key governmental decisions regarding the ruling of the Imperium. Gulliman revoked their right to rule the Imperium upon his return. However, since the start of the Indomitus Crusade, he subsequently reinstated a portion of their ruling power. A portion of them even deigned to stage a coup. However, this plot has since been foiled by the Grand Master of Assassins. The Inquisition is one of several groups shrouded in utter mystery, who operate under the pretense of vengeance and utilise fear as if it were second nature. Many of their endeavours are closely guarded and seldom known by many. But if someone were to have the right means, you may be surprised by what depths they are willing to stoop to in the name of protecting humanity from the heretic, traitor and the alien. 
the agents of the Inquisition use a combination of personal discretion and whatever means deemed necessary in order to pursue the enemies of mankind, not limited to using psychic powers, Xenos artifacts and heretical constructions. They answer only to Gulliman to ensure that anyone of any position can be investigated and kept safe from those who would seek to harm or influence them. Below Gulliman, the Lords of Terror and the Inquisition lie the Adeptus Terra, Adeptus Mechanicus and the Adeptus Ministorum, otherwise known as the Priesthood of Terror, the Priesthood of Mars and the State Church. The Adeptus Terra notably includes the Adeptus Administratum, responsible for the administrative functions of the Imperium, the Departmento Minitorum, who are responsible for supplying the Imperial Guard, the Officio Assassinorum, a secretive division who aim to remove key leaders of the enemy's ranks, the Imperial Fleet and the Inquisition. Key forces within the Adeptus Terra are the Adeptus Astronomica, who maintain the Astronomicon mentioned earlier, the iconic Adeptus Astartes, the mighty Emperor's Angels, the marvellous Adeptus Custodes, the Guardians of the Emperor, and the loyal Adeptus Arbites, the police of the Imperium. One of the most curious members are the rogue traders, who essentially act as merchants, given the blessing of the Emperor's will to rule over their respective lands as they see fit, as you might expect. They have a rich history, and so deserve an entire deep dive to themselves. Be sure to keep in touch if this indeed piques your interest. Lord knows I have plenty of free time. The Adeptus Mechanicus are the technicians, scientists and brilliant minds who build and maintain the equipment, vicious war machines and valiant vessels of the Imperium. Forge worlds are the pride and joy of the priesthood of Mars. These planet-sized foundries create skyscraper-scale vehicles capable of cataclysmic levels of destruction when employed. They are treated as holy relics and giant living creations with their own souls and wills. Blessed, cleaned and prayed to, their presence is either a sign of salvation or doom. This attitude is shared by all the loyal priests of Mars, who use censors, rituals and rites of prayer to keep their creations moving and appeased. In a dark age of technology, where millennia old technology functions, but their reason for doing so is lost to the annals of time, prayer seems to be one of the few things that they can do to keep the Imperium running. Whilst we have considered all of these great and monolithic rulers and operators, we have still not covered the average Imperial citizen. What is life like for them? The outlook is bleak for most, to be quite honest. Believe me, if you were transported to this time, in all likelihood, you wouldn't be a Lord or even an Imperial Guardsman. You'd be here, in the depths of an urban megastructure. Imagine, you're one amongst a crowd of billions within a hive city, a huge sprawl of concrete and girders. Your home is a concrete hexagon, only slightly larger than a coffin although it may as well be. You will work every day in one of the many heavy industrial factories for this privilege, or be deemed unfit for society and unworthy of your body to be turned into a lobotomized cyborg so that you may better serve the emperor who you hold so, so dearly. Crime, violence and suffering is common. Living is the embodiment of stress. But still, would you rather be there living some semblance of life ignorant to the monstrosities and horrors of the Imperium and Immaterium alike, or living off-world with the knowledge of all the gnashing teeth and flaying claws that await within the not-so-far reach of space. This concludes today's session. What do you think? Pitiful existence, isn't it? Although, it is remarkable that they managed to keep on ticking, I will say. What do you think the best position to hold within the Imperium would be, for yourself? All things considered, I think I'd do quite well as a librarian. Perhaps a tradesman of some kind? I am fond of that kind of thing. Well, you're free to go. Catch you next time. If you're still here, thanks for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed this first dive into some 40k lore, and I hope you look forward to all else we have to discover.